good afternoon it's me Rhonda welcome back to my channel um, I'm coming at you with my um, my daily Bible study that actually took place yesterday and I was unable to get a video up for you guys so I am kind of backtracking a little bit to share um, to share what I learned <sighs> y'all sometimes when I read through something I think I understand it and then I can be so far off and then when it's brought to clarity and it's crystal it makes me question my reading ability sometimes my understandability of it's like am I overthinking it or am I thinking too shallow so that I'm not picking up the meat and um, so that's kind of what happened yesterday. And then when I found that I went, I even went back through it and read it just before I started um, this video because I just wanted to make sure that I understood what I was reading so that when I share it with you guys, it makes sense. Um, now you, you guys, if you're new to my channel, welcome. Um, I just really get on here and share my personal faith journey, my spiritual walk, the things that stand out <clears throat> to me in my Bible along with my commentary um, I am not a scholar I'm not a seminary student however I would love I think I would love to be one <laughs> but at this point in my life I think it's not feasible just yet but I love God's Word so much and I have learned so much and I have realized and discovered that it's not just Sunday Sunday church and Sunday school and vacation Bible school and they I mean it is so deep and the deeper that I go and the more that I learn the more I just feel like I want to share it with everybody um, I know that God has given me a gift I've been told several times that people really understand the way that I explain things or and th that is completely God y'all that is a gift he has given me and I think it has to do with because I like things simplified in layman's term and how that I can understand it. And then I can kind of build and rabbit hole from there. So what my channel is mainly is I just want to jump on here, jump straight into my scripture, share what I've learned, how the commentary kind of broke it down to me, and then just hand it out there to you guys. And you can take it and absorb it. Say, hey, that makes sense to me too. Or you can turn it around and... and give me something that may you may have picked up that would help me to even be more enhanced with um the scripture knowledge and just to enhance my spiritual and faith journey um so it's like a two-way street i want to give but i also want to receive from you guys so i appreciate every single comment that you guys leave anything that may lead me into a you know a better understanding i am for it i am here to pick up what you're putting down so anyway let's get right to it so I am um, rounding out verse 12 of Matthew, and um, it's the last two subtitles. The first one that I'm going to talk about is the, the return of the unclean spirit, and then the second one is Jesus' mothers and brothers. Blew me away. I totally did not pick up that the first couple times, three times that I read through that. So um, I'm going to read, so Matthew 12 verse 43 return of an unclean spirit so i'm going to just read it it's very short when the unclean spirit has gone out of a person it passes through waterless places seeking rest but finds none then it says i will return to my house from which i came and when it comes it finds the house empty swept and put in order then it goes and brings with it seven other spirits, more evil than itself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. So also will it be with this evil generation. Now, when I first read through that, the only little note that I made on my um, the side of my journaling Bible was end of days, tribulation, worse idolatry than ever before. So that's kind of what I initially picked up from reading that um, that passage. And um, 
when I pulled out my commentary, I was, I was close, but yet so far. So let me kind of bring to life a little bit more understanding how and what it said. So verses, um, chapter 12, verse 43 and 44. Now, Jesus gives in parabolic form a summary of the past, present, and future of unbelieving Israel. The man represents the Jewish nation. The unclean spirit is the idolatry which characterized the nation from the time of its servitude in Egypt to the Babylonian captivity. It was as if the unclean spirit had gone out of the man from the end of captivity to the present day, the Jewish people had not been idol worshippers. So when we got to this point, it's like they had, you know, they've been out of Egypt, they've been settled in their own land, and they've kind of grown and prospered and multiplied. And so at this point, the Jewish people have not been idol worshippers. So when the unclean spirit has gone out of the person, and that I boxed up the unclean spirit is the idolatry, just like it said here. And then of the person being the Hebrew nation, Israel. And then I boxed up, it finds the house empty, swept, and put in order. So when the idolatry circles back around, because everything repeats itself. If you look back at history at any point of time, everything repeats itself. We are in a state of repetition right now. And we are way worse than it was ever before, in my opinion. Not that I lived back then, but from reading some of the the twisted and perversion and the things that our world has now blows my mind. And it just, and as it said with this evil generation, it's going to be worse than ever before. So back to what I was reading. So anyway, the unclean spirit is the idolatry. The, the person, the persona in here is the nation of Israel. And so when the evil idolatry, when idolatry resurfaces, it's like the house is empty, swept, and put in order. So the Jewish nation has been nice and God-worshipping, God-fearing, reverence people. And over 1,900 years ago, the Savior saw admittance into that empty house. And now Jesus is going to Israel to the Hebrew nation, to the Jews, to say, I am the Messiah. I am the one that you guys have been waiting for. He was the rightful occupant, the master of the house, being the nation, but the people steadily refused to let him in. Though they no longer worshipped idols, they would not worship the true God either. The empty house speaks of spiritual vacuum, which is a dangerous condition as the sequel shows. Reformation is not enough. There must be the positive acceptance of a savior. So in the coming day, the spirit of idolatry will decide to return to the house occupied by seven spirits more wicked than himself. Since seven is the number of perfection or completeness, it probably refers to idolatry in its fully developed form. This looks forward to the tribulation. This looks forward to the tribulation when the apostate nation will worship the Antichrist. To bow down to the man of sin and to worship him as God is a more terrible form of idolatry than the nation has ever been guilty of in the past. And so the last state of that man, the last state of that man, which when we looked over here, the man represents the Jewish nation. The last state of that man becomes worse than the first. Unbelieving Israel will suffer the awful judgments of the great tribulation and their suffering will exceed far that of the Babylonian captivity. The idolatrous portion of the nation will be utterly destroyed at Christ's second advent. So also will it be with this evil generation. The same apostate, Christ-rejecting race that spurned the Son of God 
at his first advent will suffer severe judgment at his coming. So while I picked up initially end of days, tribulation, worse idolatry than ever before, I had a much deeper understanding because of how it broke it down as the unclean spirit, meaning the idolatry and actual nation of um, the, the Jewish nation and meaning that idolatry does come back around and, and while the Messiah is the rightful occupant of Israel, they're refusing him, but yet they're letting the idolatry sink back in. And so now they're going to get double trouble for their trouble because it's going to come back around. It says seven times it's the worst it's ever been. There will be seven spirits more wicked than himself. So that's pretty wicked. So that was kind of what I picked up on that. Um, and then I jumped down to finish off chapter 12 with verse um, 46 through 49. And that reads, While he was still speaking to the people, behold, his mother and his brothers stood outside asking to speak to him. But he replied to the man who told him, Who is my mother? And who are my brothers? And stretching out his hand towards his disciples, he said, Here are my mother, here are my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. I just got chills because when I read this to you, you may have already picked up on this before, but I never picked up on it. I always thought that that was such a confusing verse and so I would kind of read it go okay so he's saying that okay and then I would move on but since intentional is my commitment this year to how I read my Bible I'm going the extra step so according to the commentary this is what it says and in that um, particular those last three verses the mother and brothers of Jesus this verse describes a seemingly commonplace incident in which Jesus' family comes to speak to him. Why had they come? Mark may give us a clue. Some of Jesus' friends decided that he was out of his mind, and perhaps his family had come to take him away quietly, which I had read before. Um, that that was probably one of the things, oh, they, he's crazy, he's out of his mind, he's talking, you know, just... He's just crazy. You need to come and get your family member. And so when he told that his mother, when he was told that his mother and brothers were waiting outside to speak to him, the Lord responded by asking, who is my mother and who are my brothers? And that's a capital M. Um, Whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and my sister. So the startling announcement is pregnant this, let me just reword that because I took that way to the wrong side. <laughs> this startling announcement is pregnant with spiritual significance. It marks a distinct turning point in Jesus' dealing with Israel. Mary and her sons represented the nation of Israel, Jesus' blood relations. So up to now, he had limited his ministry largely to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But it was becoming quite clear that his own people would not have him. Instead of bowing to their Messiah, the Pharisees had accused him of being controlled by Satan. So now Jesus announces a new order of things. Henceforth, his ties with Israel would not be the controlling factor in his outreach. Though his compassionate heart would continue to plead with his countrymen according to the flesh, Chapter 12 signals an unmistakable break with Israel. The outcome is now clear. Israel will not have him, so he will turn to those who will. Blood relationships will be superseded by spiritual considerations. Obedience to God will bring men and women, whether Jews or Gentiles, into vital relationship with him. Before leaving this incident, we should mention two points concerning the mother of Jesus. 
First, it is evident that Mary did not occupy any place of special privilege as far as access into his present was concerned. Second, the mention of Jesus' brothers strikes a blow at the teaching that Mary was, perpetual, was a perpetual virgin. This implication is strong that these were actual sons of Mary and therefore half-brothers of our Lord. This view is strengthened by such other scriptures as in Psalm, Matthew, Mark, John, Acts, 1 Corinthians, and Galatians. So y'all, that to me was a huge breakaway because that was like when Jesus says, okay, well, I came for Israel and Israel refused me once again. They're stepping away and stepping back from God and not being the people he has chosen. And now he's going, well, now it's going to be about the spiritual connection. It's going to be, it's no longer blood on blood. It's going to be the spiritual relationship. Who believes, who chooses to believe and come to me is going to be in the, in the vital relationship. And I just thought that, I never caught that before. I have never caught that before. I would love to know if you have. Um, so yeah, the only thing that I put in my notes for that after I read that was the turning point of Jesus's ministry from the, um, the Jewish nation of Israel to the Gentile nation, to everyone. So to all, just like John three sixteen says, to whoever, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So yeah, so that just rounded out my chapter 12. I am going to pick up on chapter 13 in the morning and read through those and hope to have a, another video for you guys um, soon. I hope that was good um, for you guys. I know it was interesting to me. I love getting on here and sharing just little short snippets of my quiet time. Um, you know, just the video long enough to get you thinking and maybe grabbing your Bible and reading it, picking it up and going, oh my gosh, I've never read it like that. Maybe it'll have you highlighting a few different things note taking on the side or in your journal so yeah anyway if this was helpful or encouraging or inspiring i would love for you to to subscribe to my channel hit the little notification bell so when i pop back on here with another video you'll get notified and share it with a friend invite them into the community i am loving how we are having conversations and talking and really sharing heart to heart um you know issues and 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 ideas and comments and it just is growing and I'm so tickled and I am so appreciative to every single one of you that watched this video and hit that little thumbs up and subscribe. So yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Have a great rest of your day. Hey you guys, I wanted to jump back on here real quick. Um, I just did a video on my Bible study notes from yesterday, but I also wanted to share with you guys, I got a new devotional yesterday that I just started and it's by Lisa Turkers. I don't know if you, any of you guys follow her, but it's her new, You're Going to Make It. Her last devotion, which was, um, oh, Seeing Beautiful Again. If you have not read that book, gone through that book, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. It touched on places in um, my heart that I didn't know that I still had um, leftover emotions from my divorce and you know through some of my just some just some of my past that had kind of slid I guess into a nook and cranny that I really didn't realize were still there and that really helped work through some of those but um I really didn't know why I, I think I just bought this because I really like her books and she has a similar story she had infidelity in her um marriage where she has chosen to stay in her marriage. I did not stay in my marriage at that time. I was in a completely different different headspace. And um, I became a different person. If you haven't seen my testimony video, I kind of walked you a little bit through that without really, you know, expelling everything. But it was not pretty. It was not nice. And I was not the person that I am now. So with that being said, I wasn't sure what to expect by getting this, but I think it was just out of um, knowing that you, she usually writes really well and her story was similar to mine. And I watch her podcast, um, Theology, Therapy and Theology, I think it is. Anyway, it's a really good podcast if um, 
if you've not signed up for it or anything like that. Just download it in your Apple podcast and listen to a couple of them and you'll be hooked. But anyway, neither here nor there, I wanted to share this with you because from just the first two, the one I did yesterday, now remember I didn't, I really didn't know why I was being led to get this other than I just had a connection with her before going through what she went through. But um, wow, today's spoke directly to me and I am just gonna read one little part of it because it's broken up into morning and evening. So, but since my day kind of got off to a rocky start, my quiet time ended up being like right around this time of the day. But um, it ta- in the morning, her the verse was Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Um, And then she just kind of walks through how she had read an article, and the article states that how our brains are wired for safety, and that the brain is looking for how to conserve energy, and one way it does this is by making predictions. And so that we kind of know what to expect so that we're not blindsided and we can kind of keep a sense of control, so to speak. And it kind of predicts um, how to search for the reassurance of predicted safety. Even though we can't clearly see what will happen today, tomorrow, or in the next month, our brain seeks that. And it has a protection mechanism that kind of helps us to... um, just not be ruined by that. And so while she was saying that she was thinking that this might be her brain's attempt to conserve energy, it was making her anxiety spiral. Um, She's been learning how to find security for today, even as facing many uncertainties about tomorrow. So kind of going through her um, relationship and her marriage and the, the things that she was dealing with. And some of this backstory I get just because I know from the podcast and I know just the difficulty of it from my experience in, in my um, own infidelity. Not not that I was, but in the infidelity in my marriage, in my first marriage. And um, so anyway, there was just, the morning one didn't hit me as hard as the, the evening one did. So she leaves you with a statement to remember as you walk through the day, and it's, I can find security for today even as I face uncertainty about tomorrow. And so then you pick it up in the evening, and so, and it says, Another thing that confuses me and stirs up my anxiety is when things seem to be harder and harder for me. While someone who hurt me appears to be thriving, I feel like I'm trying to be obedient to God, so shouldn't I be the one who is thriving? I felt that. Y'all, I felt that. (laughs) That's how I lived the past 10 years of my life. How can the one who keeps on sinning seem so happy and without care in the world? God, do you even see me at all? Said that. I have said those words. Can you not see me? Can you not see me? Just like that. And then it asks the question, have you experienced this? And I was like, girl, yes, I have 100%. This seems unfair, but remember, we don't know the full story of what's really happening with that other person. Just because something looks good doesn't mean that it is good. The same fire that provides warmth can also severely burn you. The same water that feels refreshing can be a destructive flood. The same sin that brings someone temporary pleasure can be a regret that leaves a permanent scar. That I never considered. Never in my wildest, ugly thoughts did I think that that person would feel remorse or have a scar left over from what happened. It just wasn't there. I was not the person, and if there was going to be a scar there, I wanted to be the one to put it there. I was not a nice person, y'all. I am sorry. You want it authentic? This is authentic. But this is what this devotion brought out of of me just a few minutes, you know, when I was reading earlier. Remember that sin is always a package deal of both tempting pleasures and eventual 
consequences. If someone participates in the pleasures, they will absolutely unleash the resulting consequences. You may not see the consequences of another person's sin, but you can know it's there. For a really ugly, that gave me comfort. That's all I can say. That gave me comfort. Our job isn't to focus on the other person's sin and consequences. We must focus our attention on processing and healing from what hurt us. We must walk through what we've walked through. If we don't, we may risk lashing out from our unhealed places. I've done that so many times. So many times I felt this. We must keep trusting God's faithfulness and obeying God's instructions during his healing journey. During this healing journey. We may not know what tomorrow holds, but we can be confident in the God who holds our tomorrows. Y'all, when, when you go through something that changes you as a person, that made me sweat thinking about this, it, and then you read something where somebody else actually can relate. It's like giving validation to the... not. I just want, I just kind of want to clarify. I'm not that person anymore. I see things completely different now than I did then. But the the things that she says here validate so many of the feelings that I had early on in our in our divorce and our breakup and the the path that I had to go through was so hard. It was so emotionally and mentally hard that I blocked it out for many years and that's why I turned to drinking and that carried me for so long until God said this is enough this is enough and then he rescued me but so I can look back now at this with a completely different set of eyes and compassion and but at the same time I can recognize the person that I was in that time because those were things I said and thought and felt and some of the things I would act out on some of the things I would speak and you know the whole thing better out than in is not always true <laughs> because once you spit the words out you can't take them back and you are just as guilty as hurting somebody because you know the whole cliche hurt people hurt people it's so true so anyway I wanted to I just had to share that because I don't know where you are in your journey. I don't know what your life past is like, but if you've had any sort of trauma or um, something that you still hold on to because you were hurt so bad in your past and you haven't let it go, you think you have, and you've moved on and you've you know you've remarried and you've you know started a whole other family and you're in a different season of your life now. I can bet you there's still stuff in there that has to be healed. I'm a, I believe it because I feel it every day. Things that pop up, they're going, I thought I dealt with that. But no, it's still there. So I would completely recommend this is the first book I got Seeing Beautiful Again. It's a 50 day devotion. I outlined, I highlighted this book, was, this book was really, really helpful just to be validated almost, just to be validated that, yeah, I felt that too. Yeah, I thought that too. You're not alone. You're not an evil, sinful person. Um, you, this is a human emotion. I felt that too was very helpful. Then getting this one just because I liked her last one, I did not expect on day two for it to sucker punch me like it did. So yeah, there's still things I got to work on and I'm so grateful that God leads me on that way. I am. I want to do the hard work. I want to walk the narrow path. And if he's telling me, you still got issues that you need to deal with, bring it on. I want to deal with it. So anyway, I thought I would share that with you guys. Um, yeah. Drop a, co drop a comment below if you are still dealing with something that you feel you're being convicted to walk the walk in. And get it cleared up because I can guarantee you you will feel better it definitely is a light at the end of the tunnel I've walked through that darkness I have walked through that dark tunnel I have felt my way and all because of the grace of God could have never 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 done it on my own 
I wasn't doing it on my own. If the proof's in the pudding. I was not doing it on my own. I was drowning my sorrows and my anger and my bitterness and my envy and my jealousy and all those ugly other sinful words that come out. I was trying to drown them. Didn't work. Didn't work. The Holy Spirit brought me out of it, faced to face me with it and walked me straight through it to the other side. So there is light. You just got to be willing to grow through it. Okay, guys, if this was inspiring or encouraging, let me know because I want to make sure that I am giving you the content that is helpful to you. I'm not on here just to talk to myself <laughs> in the camera. I'm hoping that I am bringing inspiration to you and encouragement to you because, you know, we all have walked through dark places and we all have dark places that we're still going to be walking through and we're just here to help grow each other stronger um, have a community that we can rely on to you know hand hold us through us and remind us whose we are whose we are that's the only way that we're going to get through it okay you guys have a great rest of your night